folks, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome back to Heart of the Home at Harris Acres. Today, we're in the new house and we are visiting with one of my favorite, favorite folks, Mike Calcum of The Inspirations. Now, you know him from his singing. I know him from his preaching because I love to listen to him. And I love to watch Heart's Desire Ministries. Mike and I are going to talk a little bit about that. And we're going to talk about the fact that his mama and my granny were best friends, and, and friendship is so special. Mike, you're one of my best friends, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you, Sherry. It's good to be with you. Good to be here. I want you to, <clears throat> we've talked a little bit um, in, in days past about your ministry and about your singing and about the traveling and the things you do and the fact that you've done it for how many years? 35. 35 years. My goodness. And were you married through that whole time? No. I wasn't. I started with Inspirations uh, in September of 72, and then uh, my wife and I got married in April of 76. So you'd been there long enough to know she knew you were going to be a traveling man. Oh, yeah. She, she knew, knew what it. I did before we got that's married. That's right. That's right. And she's been a big part of that, hasn't yes, she? Yes, she has. Yeah. Yeah, always been a support of it and always been right there. At Singing in the Smokies, People can't wait to get there and eat Boo's Strawberry Shortcake. That's right. That's one of That's the big things. And, and it's so funny. We'll be sitting up there. You know, we always sit on the front row. And uh, people will say, now nah, I've got to go get me a little strawberry shortcake. And somebody will come back with one and somebody else will see it. And they'll be, we've got to get over there before they sell out of that <laughs> stuff. So she is a big part of your ministry. Yes, she is. And, uh, and I know now Nicole is living near you, isn't she? Yes. And uh, she and Aubrey, um, they've been there since Aubrey was very small because of the tragedy that right. y'all went through when right. Nicole lost her young husband. And, and today, <clears throat> we lost a good friend last night. She's 48 years old. And I want, to, I want to dedicate today's program to all the people we've lost that we loved. From right. Nathan, that, that you dearly loved, I know. And, and Nicole was young, and that was hard. Right. Susan was 48 years old. Um, Miss Susan Jones, who um, had a smile that would beat none. I mean, just great smile, great smile. I love to see her. And, and I, when I'd send her a card, I would talk about the fact that I missed her smile so much. Because um, a lot of people you meet... But, but the true friends and the true people that you know you can mm -hmm. depend on. And, and through your ministry, you've met a lot of people you can depend on because I know you have a lot of help with right. what you do yes, from family do. and friends. And it takes that because for you to become the machine you are traveling like you do, you've got to have some help and you've got to have support. It's Certainly. important, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. It's, it's vital to the ministry. It's vital right. to life, period, that we... Uh, as friends work together, That's right. not only as friends, but as family working for the same cause. That's right. I've heard you talk about people you can depend on to send you good music. Right. And, um, you know, I know you don't have time to, do people mail in stuff or do you just know who to depend on? We get, the inspirations gets probably a thousand different songs wow. a year that wow. people have written and sent to us. And you pick us. 12 or 14. And we usually pick 10. Mm, isn't that something? Go through that whole stack of music uh -huh. and try to find the 10 that fit us mm -hmm. and say something to us right. the best. Right. And, and the message that you're going to deliver to the public has to be something that is true and about your whole ministry. And it, it has to be the kind of things like, I have not forgotten. How many million people has that touched? I don't know that. And, and who wrote that? Lance Carpenter? Lance Carpenter, Lance Carpenter, Carpenter. Wrote that. And now on your new CD, you have another song that he wrote, which is called Things Are Different Now. Yeah, Things Are Different Now. Things Are Different Now. Things Are Different Now. They are. Things Are Different they Now. Are. Your grandchild, Precious, is growing up in a world that um, my children didn't have to face. You know, um, mm -hmm. it's very different. It's very different. And yes, it, it is. it's almost scary because what you do and what I love the gospel music, I worry about the generation behind me. Now, my 15-year-old has heard y'all, and he must, I, I, let me tell you, number nine, he says it's the best you've ever done. <laughs> the new one on the new CD, right. while I'm playing number eight, he's hitting number nine, you know, and he loves that song. That's he's good. 14 years old, and he gets that message, you know. Right. And it's important for you to reach that generation because I'm one of the old grannies, honey, when I'm gone, we want the next generation and the next generation to listen to the message and the music. Right. And that's important. And it's important that you be out here and people be aware of the fact that you are on television preaching. Mm -hmm. You're traveling, doing your evangelist two nights a week, three nights a week maybe? Two to three nights a week. I'm usually home about four days a month. 
Isn't that something? So family is important because if your family didn't support you, you could not do this. You well, could not do this. Since my son-in-law was promoted and my daughter moved back, built a house close to us, my granddaughter is there, mm -hmm. and we make it a point that we invite them to go with us wherever mm -hmm. we go mm -hmm. so that they don't have to be there by themselves right. and they don't have to depend on phone calls and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, be honest, Papa couldn't take it too long without <laughs> seeing Aubrey, <laughs> but uh, they go with us quite often so that we can be together. Mm -hmm. And I have seen Aubrey grow up and, and, and sitting there um, a couple of weeks ago singing in the Smokies, I looked over at her and I thought, what a precious child and what a wonderful life she has and how lucky she is. How she lucky really she is. is. Yeah. She's been blessed. She really is. She uh, doesn't have daddy, but right. you can, she'll say, uh, mention her own daddy now and she's only two but mm -hmm. it, she talks about daddy mm -hmm. and uh, you can say where is daddy and she'll say she's with Jesus mm -hmm. that's right she's in that's he's right. in heaven that's right um, you know the song that Milton sang the other night um, oh about the Jesus uh, I want to see the man that God sent what is the name of that song it's on the new CD when he was singing that I thought children will relate to this song Children mm -hmm. will relate to this message. And I think that's so important that you choose right. songs that the next generation can appreciate. Well, it, it seems that in society today, we think we're supposed to forget about what has oh, been. Oh, no, absolutely not. So that we not. can go ahead with what is today. That's right. But what has been has led us into what is today. Exactly. And if we don't have the true, rooted, grounded truth within right. us, we don't have tomorrow to look that's forward right. to. That's right. And I said, you know, you don't know how bad it was, but, but you know, I've been friends with your Aunt Hazel for 35 years. Right. And I didn't know how much I needed your music until I lost my husband and my mother within six weeks of each other. And I sat in an inspiration concert feeling so sorry for myself. And when Matt Dibler walked on stage and sang Resurrection Ground, I looked at myself and said, are you not the dumbest person in the world? They have got it made. And here you sit, you know, worrying about all this mm -hmm. stuff. Right. And, and that moment, my life changed. And, and I can't tell you how mm -hmm. much it changed because I made up my mind, I'm going to do more for more people. I'm going to be the best that I can be here because one day I'm going there. That's and, right. and that's what it's that's all right. about. That's what it's all about. Well, this is just a preparation ground Absolutely. for what's going to be. Absolutely. A lady came to me the other night after we had sung If You Only Knew. She would lived with a preaching husband who pastored the church for 47 years. God took him home this spring, and she was just devastated mm -hmm. without him. Right. She didn't know what to do with herself. Right. But when she heard that song the other Absolutely. night, she said, how stupid has it been that Absolutely. I'm sitting and wallowing in my sorrow exactly. when he's been promoted and she's got to enjoy it now. I could write that book. <laughs> well, guys, when, when we come back, we may write a book. You and I are going to talk a little bit more about why you do what you do and how well you do it. Hang around. Come back in just a minute, and we'll visit more with Mike Hawkham. I know you're going to enjoy this, folks. Hang around. Hi, folks. Welcome back. Mike Hoffman and I are still visiting, and we're talking a little bit about why why you do. Why do you do what you do and put yourself and your family through this? Because I have to. It's not a choice that I would make. Mm -hmm. It's the choice that was made for me. That's right. I've been bought with a price. That's right. Paid for. That's right. I'm not my own anymore. That's exactly right. And the decisions that I have to make, really, I don't make. Mm -hmm. God's already made them for me. I mm -hmm. just have to know which ones are His and which ones are right mm -hmm. and follow Him. That's right. That's right. And, and the people who know you know that to be the absolute truth. You know, that, that is the truth. You don't choose to be away from your family and you don't choose to do what you do. But boy, there are a lot of people who are glad you do. There are a lot of people who are glad you do. And you know, we all, everybody respects you as a singer, but people respect you as a man. And, and that... That's a lot to say in today's society. You know, that is a lot to say. My husband was the type of person who did too much for too many. And sometimes I would say, why do you not know how to say no? And he said, I just can't. He said, just you know, can't. I just can't. And I, I understand that about him now. <clears throat> Let me tell you a sad story. My child won his first race Saturday night. He's a go-kart racer and a good one. Never won. He won Saturday night. Yesterday, JS has been gone five years. 
And I still have crybaby days. Uh-huh. Yesterday, one of my kids reached in a pair of JS's pants that were here and found a $100 bill. Well, Nick had just said, Mom, I need a new set of tires. We cried and we cried and we cried. That $100 bill had been in his pants pocket since the day he was diagnosed with cancer. I immediately went to Nick's website and I changed the ending of his website and I said, my son won his first race Saturday night and there was a fan in the big bleachers in the sky who helped us along and and Daddy, we knew you would be there for us. He is there for us. He is there for us. And, And we get through the hard times and the hard days because we have the support. And, and we know <clears throat> everything I'm doing today, I think J.S. would be tickled to death with. You know, he was a very private person, and he, had, boy, he wouldn't be on TV. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way. That was the most bashful person. One of my friends was visiting right before he passed away, and she said, he has talked to me more today than he has in 25 mm-hmm. years. And I said, well, Cooter, I reckon he finally figured if he had something to say, he better say it. But he was very quiet, but he was very dependable. And you're that kind of man. You know, people know they can call on you. They know they can trust in you. And it's because you follow that right man, you know. And that's what it's all about. That's Y'all have another song about the cross. I think it's number two on the CD. Was mm-hmm. that written for a preacher? That was written about a preacher's oh, life. Oh, man, yeah. that is an awesome song. It's the cross that carries me. Absolutely. A lot of people, all they see is what we do. Right. They see the cross that we carry, so to speak. Right. But it's not that we carry the cross. That's right. It's that the cross has picked us up. Absolutely. And carries us. Well, I've listened to that song. It's like almost drilled in my head because I understand that message that, you know, and people do. I mean, I looked at Matt Dibler Sunday, and to be honest with you, he looked like death warmed over. Uh He's very tired. He's getting very little sleep. He's preaching. He's singing. He's doing a good job at both. But... That song relates to you and him mm-hmm. more than anything I've right. ever seen in my life. I don't know how long physically mm-hmm. we'll be able to do all that right. we're doing now. Right. But in either direction that we go from here, he knows what I need. That's right. And he knows what I can do and what I can't do. Right. And the doors that are open will stay open right. until he decides to close That's them. That's exactly right. You do what you do because you love the Lord. And you do what you do because the people need you. And and they do. They do. I have seen people sitting there. Um, Resurrection Ground is one of those. If, I, if you only knew, I'm a winner either way. There's so many songs I have not forgotten that the face of the audience is worth it all because you touch so many. Mm. So many. Right. And The other night in Mississippi, we sang in Verona, Mississippi. My television program has been on there for about five years now Mm -hmm. from Fulton and Pontotoc, Mississippi. They all get it on cable or anyway, I'd never heard but from two people in that whole area in this five years. Uh But the other night at that concert, there was probably 25 who said they watched you. I watch you every Friday night. Right. Right. But I'd never heard a word right. from them. And, and we want to encourage people, please get in touch with Mike and, and go to the Inspirations website, which is, is a good way to get a link to him, and let him know that you're watching him and let him know that you appreciate what he's doing. Now, I'm going to appreciate you helping me in the kitchen because we're going to cook a little bit today. We've spent more time talking and visiting, but guys, mm, I had to take advantage of this. I, I know how much he means to me, and I'm sure he means that much to you, too. I want you to come right back. Mike and I are going to be cooking. Hang around. We'll be back now. Hi, folks. I'm so glad you stuck around. Mike and I are back. And have we been picking blackberries? No. No. No, we didn't But do we that. found the Market Bulletin, and we love the idea that folks sell them through the Market Bulletin. Uh-huh. That's a great concept, guys. You keep picking them. I'll keep buying them. Okay. Blackberries. And I'm going to use a little bit of kick of my Savannah cinnamon. I'm going to use almond, right. which is... A little bit strange for blackberries, but it it actually just kind of tones it down a little bit. And then also, I am going to use their raspberry syrup mix. And sometimes blackberries are a little bit flat, you know. I like them, but sometimes they're a little bit flat. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to combine these two tastes, and I am going to use the raspberry and the almond. And then I'm going to add some sugar to it, and you're going to melt butter. And at my house, what button do we mash when we melt butter? Popcorn. Is that because I can't see the other numbers? I'm so sorry. You know, it may be my age. 
it may be my vanity that my glasses just kind of mm, don't work well. So, and we're going to add a little bit of sugar to the blackberries. And keep in mind, because I've used the Savannah cinnamon products, I'm not going to use a whole lot of sugar. Just stir that in. And honestly, that little bit of almond flavoring just adds a little kick to it. I tried this a couple of years ago, and everybody said, what's different about that cobbler? It's that little bit of almond flavoring. And it's just a little bit, not much. You know, it's also good to use that almond with um, Cool Whip and make a dip for fruit. Now, Mike, you can you put me some hot water, honey? Yeah. Now, blackberries have to have Mayfield vanilla ice cream. We know you have to have Mayfield vanilla ice cream. There you go. Now, have you ever had my cobblers before? Mm. Okay, well, well, the kick to this is the only liquid you use is butter. No milk, no nothing. And you mix equal amounts of sugar and flour. And Michael, if you'll notice, have you seen me measure anything? Not yet. No, I don't measure. <laughs> I can't read the lines on the cup. Right. <laughs> so what good would it do me? <laughs> But I just know when it's right. I just, you know, you know the consistency is right and you just keep working with it and that is perfect. Boy, well, that was. I, I remember when my grandmother used to be cooking, I'd send one church, she'd have a little pinch of this uh -huh. and a little pinch of that. Exactly. All I knew is I didn't want pinched. Well, that's right. Well, my granny used to say um, T90. So T90 is one of my favorite words. I'd say, Granny, how much do you put? Just a T90 bit. No, oh, okay. And, and I've always wondered exactly what is T90. Now, Mike, we've got the oven heated to 395, and I'm going to have you put this in there. And when it gets done, we're going to serve it with Mayfield vanilla ice cream. All right. And then we're going to enjoy some gospel music. And I don't know who we're featuring today, but I can promise you it'll be somebody good because you can trust me when it comes to gospel music. I've got good taste, considering the inspiration's my favorite group, <laughs> you know. You know, folks know they can trust me. We have a little DJ here in Jasper, Tom Haney, who um, works with us at WLJA. I feature y'all every Sunday morning, and we call it the Hometown Sing. And it started because you're a hometown boy. Correct. And we love doing that, and we love we get calls from everywhere. We do a little contest every week, and we ask them questions about y'all. And usually within 30 seconds, somebody knows the answer. So people have followed y'all and uh, appreciate what you do. Kind of like we're going to appreciate this cobbler when it comes out of the oven. Uh, I'm appreciating it all the time. Oh, yeah. Now, that looks good. Now, will you stick that bad boy in the oven? Uh, Be careful. Top shelf. Mike and I are going to continue visiting, and we want you to continue visiting with us every week. And we want you to check out our website, www.heartofthehomerecipes.com. Remember, guys, we made it simpler for you. Heartofthehomerecipes.com. We're on every week, and we want you to stay tuned, check in with us, look at our website, because we do update, and we add the different videos from previous shows. We've got some of the oldies, and you'll enjoy those. I look younger, guys. It's been 18 months. We've been on the air a while, and we've really enjoyed this, and we've enjoyed coming into your home. We also enjoy you coming into mine, and we welcome you. Do this on a weekly basis. Put us on your calendar, guys. Blackberry cobblers one week, tuna salad one week, but you know it's always going to be simple. Look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye. Folks, I've enjoyed coming into your home. I love you coming into mine. Come back to Harris Farm often. Come back to Harris Acres. I welcome you. Now, I welcome you to enjoy some of my favorite gospel music. You know I love gospel music. I love cooking and I love gospel music. I want you to sit back and enjoy one of my favorite songs, maybe two of my favorite songs. I think you're going to like this. Sit back and enjoy. When across to the other side of Jordan, over on that golden shore, when across to the other side of Jordan, I'll live forevermore. Twill be glory in the morning, for there never comes a night. When across to the other side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. So many loved ones who have made this trip I know Oh, how I long to see them as a journey here below To hear them tell of heaven and the streets all paved with gold When across to the other side of Jordan I hear the half that's never been told When across to the other side of Jordan Over on that golden shore When across to the other side of Jordan I'll live forevermore There'll be glory in the morning for there never comes a night when across to the other side
side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. Well, when I crossed to the other side of Jordan, over on that rolling shore, when I went to the other side of Jordan, I'll live forever for it will be glory in the Lord. For there never comes a night when I cross to the other side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. This trip I know. Oh, how I long to see them as a journey here below. To hear them tell of heaven and the streets all paved with gold. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, I hear the hat that's never been told. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, over on that golden shore. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, I'll live forevermore. There'll be glory in the morning, for there never comes a night. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. Well, when I cross to the other side of Jordan, over on that golden shore. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, I'll live forever. Lord, will be glory in the morning. Oh, there never comes a night. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. When I cross to the other side of Jordan, where my Jesus is alive. 